Welcome back. Let's answer a question today that comes up regularly, if not super frequently, I get it at least, I want to say three or four times a month. The question of, can I improve my eyesight after I already had LASIK? And I'll read to you a quick email here in context of this question, just to illustrate with a couple of specific points. Uh, unfortunately, I had LASIK about 10 years back. My eyesight was about minus 10 and minus 6. Doctor warned me that I would still be left with around half diopter after the procedure. Now, my current diopter is around minus 5 and minus 4. So, for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to say minus 8 before LASIK, then this person had LASIK, and now they're back to minus 5 diopters of myopia. And the question is, can I improve my eyesight even if I had LASIK? Now, first, I have a problem with this question. And the, my fundamental issue with this question, I'll address whether you can improve your eyesight in a second, but the fundamental problem that I have with this is it's asked from a perspective of trust. Like this person trusts me, some random internet guy, to answer whether they can improve their eyesight rather than going the route of understanding why I say you can improve your eyesight in the first place. And let me explain this. You can improve your eyesight based on the premise that your eye responds to stimulus. And this fundamental premise on which everything that we talk about is based is reflected in a lot of scientific studies and our understanding of vision biology. So when you come to end myopia and you see my stupid face and you see me referring to myself as the holy eye guru with an imaginary beard, even though the point is I'm trying not to build trust. I'm trying to be the person that points you in a direction of something to evaluate that's something other than what mainstream for-profit optometry tells you. So I'm just some guy, like I'm not somebody you should blindly quote unquote trust, but I'm just a guy going, hey, look at this. There's a bunch of scientific studies here and this is what we know about vision biology. So what I'm saying is your eyes aren't broken. Myopia is merely stimulus response, right? It's a refractive state change of a fundamentally healthy eye. So the thing is, if you understand these basic premises of what's going on with your eye, then you can take the next logical step and understand what LASIK is. LASIK is just another lens in front of your eye, changing your refractive state, just like a contact lens or just like glasses, except in this case, the lens is cut directly into your eye, which is problematic, which we'll cover a little bit later, but it's no different functionally than contact lenses or glasses. So if you're understanding all of this, then you can answer the question yourself. You don't need me to answer it. And in answering the question yourself, you also helped yourself to understanding the science and biology rather than trust. I'm doing my best possible on this website to undermine trust. I don't have fancy titles. I don't have a fancy website. I don't do fancy stuff. I point you to science. So I, I want you to understand things and then be able to answer these kind of questions by yourself. That's really the goal. Now it's possible that this person did all that and is just asking for reassurance, in which case the answer is, yeah, obviously you can improve your eyesight. The, the minus eight diopter that is now behind this permanently cut lens in your eye, you can't do anything about that, right? That's not, the, some people call that cure. It's not a cure, it's just a lens cut into your eye. The axial elongation of your eyeball, so your eyeball has grown longer from minus lens use before LASIK, now you got LASIK, we can't reverse that axial elongation, which clinical science suggests you otherwise can, but that's locked behind LASIK. That's the fundamental problem I have with LASIK is you can't, when you change your mind later and you realize that your eye having grown too long is a bad thing long term, again here you go to Google Scholar and look at the increased risk factors for retinal detachment, for lattice degeneration, for macular degeneration, for a host of other issues with axial elongation, with high myopia. You have significantly increased risk factors for, for actual health conditions if you have high myopia because of the axial elongation and that axial elongation is locked in if you had LASIK surgery. So that's not fantastic, but spilt milk, 
let's not dwell on that. That eight diopters is, it is what it is. But now the extra five diopters that this person is wearing with glasses, because LASIK didn't fix anything, right? Like LASIK didn't stop progressive myopia. LASIK didn't cure anything. LASIK is just another lens, right? And behind that lens, progressive myopia continued as vision science tells us, as studies tell us. If you go to Google Scholar, there's hundreds and hundreds of references to studies that tell us that minus lenses cause or are likely to cause progressive myopia, which is what happened in this LASIK case, right? Like the myopia progression continues and this person gets glasses again and the myopia increases again. And that vicious cycle just continues repeating. And the only way you can disrupt the cycle is to address the cause. Uh, LASIK doesn't address the cause. It's minus lens wear and your close-up habits and the wrong kind of stimulus that causes increasing myopia. So another way to look at it is your eye having this, you having this experience with the eye of progressive myopia means your eye is fundamentally working as it should. It's working as vision biology, vision biology suggests it does, which is it responds to the environment, it responds to the stimulus, it thinks the focal plane is wrong because of the minus lenses and it elongates, right? As long as that happens, it's elongating, it also shortens. I have some study references on nmyopia.org that pretty clearly show that, that science has shown axial change of the human eye to go in both directions. Not just animal eyes, which has also been shown extensively, but also in human eyes. The eye doesn't just elongate, it also shortens. Sometimes retail optometry claims that this isn't possible. Retail optometry is fundamentally separated from uh, ophthalmology science, from our understanding of biology. There's a big rift between, between retail and science for somewhat obvious reasons. But we know that the eye grows longer, the eye grows shorter. So if you change your habits, if you change the stimulus that is causing your eye to currently elongate, LASIK, no LASIK, doesn't matter, then you will have the result of your progressive myopia stopping and likely also reversing, again, given the right stimulus. So you can do this, and there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that have done this. I try to copy-paste their Facebook updates and the emails and everything on the site as often as I can. I don't have it separated by post LASIK because why? LASIK LASIK doesn't make a difference. LASIK doesn't affect how your vision biology functions. It's just another lens, right? Like it doesn't stop myopia progression. Sometimes they talk about, the people that sell you LASIK, they talk about touch-ups, which drives me insane. It's invasive surgery, the outcome of which is irreversible. So if you had no side effects, lucky you, if you Google LASIK side effects, you'll see that that is a risky procedure. You'll see that even the FDA says there's a significant amount of side effects. Even the people that got LASIK approved in the first place changed their minds and went back and said, this is really not a safe procedure. You can Google that stuff. You can find those things pretty quickly. But the touch up idea, the idea that your myopia continues after LASIK and can just be touched up is incorrect. It's another invasive procedure, the results of which are irreversible. So you're, you're covering up another diopter, two or three of myopia behind that cut in your eye lens. You now can't address that axial change, whether you believe it in or not, which is another thing I find curious, how people make a belief thing out of something that there's fairly hard science on showing how the biology works. The, the fact remains that your myopia may very well continue to progress after LASIK because LASIK didn't address the cause. And you can absolutely reverse your myopia to the point that you had LASIK, right? Like you can't, you can't do anything about what happened before LASIK. Whatever adopters are in there behind that surgery, whatever axial elongation has already happened there, you can't address. You're going to have to live with the increased risk factors. But up to that point, you can and you should. In this case, this person had eight doctors that was addressed with LASIK and then another five doctors currently being addressed with lenses. That's 13 doctors of, of refractive state change. That is a notably elongated eyeball. In my opinion, like I personally would want to address that. I'm not talking about medical conditions here. I'm just talking about refractive states. It's it can lead to medical conditions down the road if you're not addressing this, this highly unnatural refractive state that you're creating with bad habits and minus lens use and the wrong kind of stimulus.
Hopefully this serves well as an answer. And again, if you watch this whole entire video, a big part of the point of enmiopia and my crazy tone and the sarcasm and the rants and the eye guru thing is to, to push you away from trust. I'm, look at my face, look at his face. I'm not trustworthy. I want you, I'm just a guy pointing you in a direction, right? And if you, if you find a science valid and if you find the, the, the evaluation of the biology valid, then you can look at my method and the thousands of people that have used it to reverse semiopia. But you shouldn't just trust me or it without evaluating, does this stuff make sense? So much stuff on the internet is complete nonsense. You should look at me and you should look at enmiopia and every other thing with a very critical eye. And you should look at, is there science? Are there studies? Not just, not just whatever fluff is on the website and not just whatever is on regular Google of other people. There's so much dumbness on the internet. Seriously, it pains me. I had thyroid issues in the past. I had other issues in the past that I did internet research for. And what I found is the vast majority of the stuff sounds sometimes tempting, right? You're like, wow, lots of people like this and this person looks really credible and they wrote a book, but I go to Google Scholar and I look for studies, right? And then I, I look at how does the biology work? I try to understand what's going on rather than trusting people and especially shiny, nice internet stuff, right? So please do that, please do that. Feel free to ask questions. I try to answer them here whenever I get a chance. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.